Hello and welcome to Talking Game is a match review of West Bromwich have been nil, West Ham United 3 and West Ham go 5th until Man United play at Old Trafford at least. Anyway, um, Ryan, what did you make of West Brom's start? Did they impress you today um, for the opening 15 minutes or so? Uh, yeah, I think first 25 really. I mean, just from what I can recall, we only had like that one chance, what was it, about a 17th minute, but apart from that there was... Very, very unlucky not to score a couple of goals, but it worked out in our favour. Did um, Ryan, do you think Antonio might have answered a few critics with his right back position there, clearing offline a couple of times? I think there might have been a few fans crawling under the rock a wee bit. Ah, uh, what what a touch that was when on his right foot. I mean, because when, when you first when he first happened, I thought, oh, because even the guys on Sky Sports was going, oh, and uh, Adrian's made a world class save. But then we watched the replay. It's his right foot, isn't it? Ah. Oh. Charlie, uh, yeah, very good. Charlie, minute one nil through Czech Kiati was a wee bit undeserved for West Brom, a wee bit undeserved for West Ham. Yeah, like I said at half time, I think it was a little bit. I think we were probably lucky not to be down at that point. And uh, but Payet's ball was absolutely perfect, and Czech Kiati only really had to do was nod it into the net, and it was it was perfectly done. But I think we were lucky not to be down. But I think West Brom. They should have been away, but they need someone in the box who can actually put the ball in the net. So, yeah. Shot theirself in the foot anyway. Ryan, is is this the difference between West Ham this year and West Ham of the last decade? Even the fact that we just need one chance, and we are super clinical this season in some games. It has to be said. Absolutely. That, um, you know, that's been our biggest thing this year is how clinical we have been in the goals we scored. And the irony of it is, we're looking for a 20 goal season striker in the summer. Yeah, 2 0. Ryan, what did you make of that? Do you think we that just twisted the knife in West Brom there when we went two goals up? Yeah, I, I, I think I think I think that was the killer blow for them. You know, and especially how Noble managed to finish that, because you're because at that point you think, oh no, the defender's got him, and it's just gone through, and the keeper just didn't see it. And lucky finish in my opinion, but no, but it's just. Clinicalness. We'll take them all. We'll take them all. Charlie, did Noble score at the right time for you? Right before half time. Pulis is going in at half time. One goal down. Lots to play for them. Bang. He has to rip up his notes. Everything's gone to pieces. Do you think that was really just sucked the life out of them completely? Yeah, I think that first 15 or so minutes, 20 minutes, however you want to call it, would have. Would have given them a lot of hope going in at half time. I think that um, Lee, he was Lico, Lico, whatever his name is, I've forgotten already. But I, I think he was very good, and I think that they had people who would, had the outlets to do something. But I think that once that second goal went in, again, as I said at half time, I, I couldn't see him scoring at all. I wasn't at all worried, and and in that second half, they they didn't re well. It sort of came to pass, didn't it? They weren't really that very. They weren't really dangerous at all. Basically, they had one or two chances here and there, and that was basically it. So. It was perfect time. Do you think at half time, uh, Ryan, Poulos put Lico over to the left and put him up against Antonio, who's a right back, and it caused a wee bit of trouble for the first 10 minutes, I thought. Do you think we were maybe a bit fortunate that West Brom didn't start with Lico on the left, given how well he performed in the first half? Uh, was that was that the 17, 16, 17 year old youngster who started today? Yeah. Um. I thought that might have been a mistake by Pulis because he was absolutely skinning Cresswell the first 15 minutes, you know. And, but you know, obviously, he must have been concerned about Antonio pushing forward most of the time, so he's probably gone to match, you know, pace for pace and power for power. Although Antonio's a lot stronger. Charlie, the second half was quite a quiet one, wasn't it? Um, there wasn't much action. Do you think that's what? West Ham really needed to do just to kill the game, just to see it out. No thrills, don't play at a high tempo, don't get injured, don't get anyone suspended, the game's finished, let's move on. Is that what you think Bilch's game plan was going at half time onwards? Yeah, it felt a lot like the um, the Watford game. It was almost a sort of, everyone sort of dropped their tempo levels and no one was really killing themselves for the win and I think that was probably the smartest move we saw we sort of stepped back we weren't really uh, I, I mean, we didn't really hit top gear throughout the entire game but we certainly in that second half I think we dropped down even lower gear and I think I think that we didn't need to as I said West Brom aren't, weren't really dangerous at all they brought on Berahino but then they couldn't really feed him the chances he needed and the few he did get he sort of scuffed them or put it wide 
it was just a solid performance. And I think, actually, I agree with Ryan to an extent. I think he should have probably kept Delico on, on the right and just had him sk- skipping past Cresswell whenever he can and just put the ball into Berahino because after that he kept trying to cut inside and do something and it wasn't really working out for him. So I just, West Brom, I don't think we're very good today, basically. <laughs> No, I, I agree with that a wee bit. Right, Mark Noble got his second, his fourth in two games. Um, unusual for Mark Noble. But what a finish. Pyatt, first of all, Payet and Carroll's 1-2 at the half. Weight line was delicious. Payet goes past the player. He rolls over onto the floor because he can't keep up with him at all. And then Carroll does the world's highest pass possible. He puts it at least 10 feet in the air for whatever reason. But what a finish by Noble. I think he made that look very easy, but Jesus, what a volley. What would you make of that, Ryan? Um, well, if I, yeah, my favourite part is when, I can't remember who the player was, when Pai just nutmegs him. <laughs> he just goes on the floor. So I'm looking forward to West Ham Twitter having a replay of that so I can watch it. Um... Well, let's be fair, Noble has had a lot of practice that type of fish, especially from the corners, but it was a lot closer. And um, no, 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 all jokes aside, it was a fantastic finish. Fantastic. Charlie, did, does that just signal? I mean, we've said on a, a few occasions this season that Noble kept keep shooting, and his shooting's improved dramatically this season. He kept coming close. He got his reward at Norwich for the lovely goal, and he scored at Anfield very early in the season. But. What what a finish that was. Is that a striker's finish for you, Charlie? Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. I think you're right. He made it look very easy, but from that ball from Carroll, that was that would have been so uh, easy to scuff in any direction, and yet he absolutely buried it. Uh, he's been going forward. He's, it's probably the best season he's ever had this season. Um, the goals he keeps popping up with are fantastic, and and they're all, they're all pretty decent finishes as well, <laughs> apart from, as Ryan said, the first one might have been a little bit lucky, but that one was emphatic, and he just seems to be getting better and better going forward, and that's a fantastic thing. Absolutely fantastic. Right, we've, we've both said it, we've all said it, we didn't really hit top gear today. Um, is that how West Ham need to start learning how to win games to an extent, when you don't play at your best, but you need to just find what it takes to get over the finish line, get the three points, and get back to the bowling ground, or next season at the Olympic Stadium? Yeah, that, that has been our biggest downfall, and I think in my opinion, I think that's where we need to look into the summer is a bit more defensively. Because where we've been a bit like, you know, trying to pass too much in in, def- in, the, in our fight in our defensive line, that's what's really cost us a Champions League place, in my opinion. And and today today we was class at showing how to close the game down through through our passing, it, but in their final third, not in ours. Fantastic. And Charlie, we've got three games left now. Swansea, Man U at home, then Stoke away. I think we do. We're seeing on the preview that Scott and Gonzo don't think we do. In your opinion, is is this? do we have three cup finals? You know, um, we need. We really want fifth. What an achievement that would be. But do you think it's three cup finals for West Ham? For me, yeah, I think it is. I think that we, we can now push and really look for that fifth spot, whereas I think a couple of weeks ago, um, two or three weeks ago, I was actually starting to look below us and thinking, oh, Liverpool could push above us. Southampton have the ability to push above us. But now, actually, I think I'm reassessing it. I'm saying, well, actually, we can step up to fifth, you know? And it might not, it might be overtaking Man United, it might be overtaking City, it might even be overtaking Arsenal, but I think we have the ability. To, I'm not saying to go to third, but what I'm saying is one of those is going to drop. Not, all three of those teams are not going to consistently score points. And if we stay on our point like we have been, we can get fifth. And, but it just requires us to stay on this consistent level of A, being able to grind out wins when we're not particularly playing well, but B, just finding the opportunities. And I think if we do that, fifth is an incredible achievement. Right, would that be the perfect send-off for the rolling ground on the 10th of May, really beating Man U and clinching fifth? Go, and, go to Stoke knowing that we're four points ahead of Man U, or even three points, because the goal defence is quite dramatically in our favour, I think. So do you think beating Man U at Upton Park in the last ever game there would just be a perfect send-off. Oh, absolutely, because, you know, I, you know, we, we all thought that the FA Cup had a name written like this year. We thought that would be the perfect send-off. But, um, no, we, no, we deserve Europe. The way we've played this season, we, we deserve Europe. And, and then, you know, and that's for us. And that need, we need Europe for us to move forward as well, you know, to really test that, test the squad and the club and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, that would be an absolute perfect send-off. 
Well, it's almost a time for all important question for them too, which I think it takes a wee bit of thinking about today. But while you're here, make sure you check out our forum at hammerschat.boards.net. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We're trying to hit one, one and a half thousand subscribers for the end of the season, so we need your help to do that. If you're watching it on the forum or on Client and Here, you just click on the YouTube link on the bottom right of the screen, and then you'll pop up on YouTube and just hit the subscribe. But in, and for all your West Ham news, do check out claretandhugh.in for all the links are below on the YouTube description. Anyway, but come on then, Ryan, who was your man of the match today? Uh, without a doubt, Cheku Kiyose. Why was that? Um, well, you know, he was he scored the first goal. He was vital in, in the second goal for his break and his pace, just getting down to give nobody assist. And there was a lot of the time in the second half, he was just everywhere, putting tackles in, following defenders to the court. They attacked West Brom a second to the corner, etc., etc. Uh, yeah, it was like Yaya, younger Yaya Torre today. Charlie, you're a man of match, please. I've got to go with Mark Noble. I think he's obviously scored two good goals, but I think outside of that, he actually played very well in the middle. Um, calm and collected passing. He broke up play very well at times. Um, there are a few challenges that he was sliding in from behind or side and just knocking the ball away from their feet without it really even seeming difficult. And he just looked he looked like a captain today. He looked very composed, very good. And so I've got to give it to him. There are a few other people to think about, but but yeah, noble for me. Um, I'm with you, Charlie, as the cap. I, I, I think it's because I'm a wee bit biased and I've always defended noble on here and given a man a match when he probably doesn't even deserve it. But... I think the fact that we both, all three of us, have picked a centre midfielder is massive. Because I remember not long ago on this show, we were saying that it's about time West Ham United got hold of the midfield and started controlling games. And it's the one thing that we failed to do. And that's why we're getting draws and not wins. Because we weren't controlling the midfield, we weren't passing the ball about. And today, West Brom couldn't get near a centre midfield. I didn't even know Dan Fletcher was on the pitch until about the, the hour mark when um, he fouled quite someone. Quite. First. Yeah. Exactly. That's how good Kayate and Noble were today. I didn't even Ryan didn't even notice Darren Fletcher played. <laughs> Darren Fletcher was on the pitch today, and, and Ryan didn't know about it. I didn't know about it until the hour mark, and that is just how good the hour centre midfield was today, and just how good they were at controlling. And I think them two are finally getting the right partnership in terms of who goes forward and when they go forward and who sits back, and it's just working. And credit to them, and credit to Bullets for sticking with it when the likes of Obiang. And Song, he, two very good centre midfielders. Bullets just had to leave them out and persevere with the two. And he's reaped the rewards today as both of them scored all our goals. It is simple as that. That's three points for West Ham. West Ham are now fifth. All eyes on Old Trafford tomorrow as to whether we stay fifth or we drop back down to sixth. But that's been Charlie. That's been Ryan. I've been Gio. We've been Hammers Chat. Do join us on our forum. And we'll see you midweek for the preview of the Swansea game. <laughs>